Stop, stop, it's far too early for all this. Hi, and welcome to another video. I'm going to be doing my Christmas card today. I know it's a little early to be thinking about Christmas. It's the 4th of October currently, but I've got to get the photograph off to the printers to print up the cards, and I have a special offer of 15% discount if I get it in before the 17th of October. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I've dug out this picture from the internet. This is Galitha Falls, which is in the Minions in Cornwall. Uh, I like to paint a local scene uh, for my Christmas card. But what I'm going to do with this is change it to something that's similar to what's behind me here. This was a picture I did earlier on in the year that was inspired by a photo, uh, painting by Joe Hush that he did. But I'll just move my head out of the way so you can see. That's hopefully what it's going to look like at the end of the day. But this process will show you how I actually go about changing the season on a photograph. So let's get on with it. Okay, on with the drawing. I'm using Arsh rough paper today, £140. The rough texture will allow me to do a lot more dry brushwork at the end of the process. Just sketching in the left hand bank there. There's a few rocks actually in the water. I'm going to try and keep the colour of the sunset there down behind the trees there. Certainly uh, have a good light in the centre and almost contrajour with these trees against the backlight there. And the pencil I'm using is um, a 2B lead very fine propelling pencil. I, f I like propelling pencils because you don't have to sit around sharpening the things if they happen to break. But of course on rough paper you'll see me toggle the top a few times. Uh, rough paper really wears the lead down quite quickly because it's quite a thin lead anyway. Just doing a few more trees. Sketching the bank there, just putting a little footbridge across there. One of my favourite subjects this is, I, I do like painting landscapes, particularly snow scenes. Getting towards the end of the drawing now. The next process will be to use masking fluid on some of the trees. So I'll be doing that next. Right, next step will be to mask out some of the areas I want to preserve for the snow. Uh, particularly tops of the stones. Uh, this footbridge here, I'll mask that out. And some of the trees will obviously have snow drifting on them. So there won't be too much masking because obviously a lot of this paper will be left white. But that's the first task. I'll just put this picture to one side for the moment. I'm using um, SAA masking fluid. I find that this one is quite thin and it's particularly good for um, situations like this. So I'll just put a little bit on the stones. Plain it fairly thickly. If you try and spread it too thin it'll leave gaps. We don't really want gaps at the moment so 
don't use your best brushes for this either. Uh, you'll, you, I'm probably preaching to the converted, but masking fluid ruins your brushes. I use a set of um, masking fluid brushes to actually do jobs like this. And I've got a couple of acrylic brushes as well. Just preserving some of the white edges. Certainly makes the task a lot easier when you come to do the backwash because you can do it in a much looser style than if you're having to stop every couple of minutes to work around things. That gives the paper a chance to dry and you won't get such a nice graduated wash. Mask these main trees out. This will be going in quite dark uh, as a contrajour something, but uh, it will give me the opportunity to leave some white bits when I come to paint these. This foot bridge in. Important not to get this on your clothes as well. I've done that in the past and it doesn't come out. It's a bit like acrylic paint. You cannot get it out of your clothes. So I advise uh, wearing old stuff. I should have started from the other side really, being left handed. Never learn. Us. So need to let that dry completely now before we do any painting. Okay first job is going to be to mix some colours before I dampen the paper because I want this to be all diffused around here. I'm going to put the strongest light source behind this footbridge here and basically head out, uh, head out from there into the, uh, the woodland gradually getting darker and darker. This will be sort of nickel titanate yellow and then go into an orange and then out to the blues and purples actually in the hedgerow and behind the trees there. So we'll mix some colours. Nickel titanate yellow. I'm going to use some cad orange as well. Cad orange. Uh, light red I have in my palette there and then we'll be into the blues and purples which I've got Rose Madder or Alizarin Crimson, um, Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue which will be those two blues that I'll mix with that. So we'll mix them up first. I may throw in a little bit of uh, Yellow Ochre or Raw Sienna, probably Raw Sienna because that's more transparent than uh, Yellow Ochre. So let's put some Titanite in the palette. It's one thing I don't like about Daniel Smith colours. You get blobs of honey out of it all the time. In fact, finally we get to the paint. Let's compare that to Windsor and Newton. This is a new tube. There's no sign of any separation there. But I seem to get it all the time with Daniel Smith. And Daniel Smith aren't cheap. Actually, I'm going to redo that one because I'm not happy with the way that's come out there. Okay. Start with these two first. A 
fairly thin mix of nickel titanate yellow. Make sure I've got plenty. Let's give that a test. Yeah, that should be about right, I reckon. Okay, let's first go. Wash the brush out. Keep this fairly clean. Alright, some cad yellow now, uh, cad orange now. It's a fairly strongish colour. A bit more water in that. A bit more cad orange. Just test that one. And just to be a bit stronger, I think. That's going to be about right, I reckon. Ultramarine blue, I want this a little bit thicker. And I'll put some rose madder in that to make a purple. That's quite strong actually, I might I'll have to water that down on the... Let's have a look at that. Yep, that should do. And... It's a touch of grey, which I'll take some ultramarine ag again. This time I'll put some burnt sienna in that. Not too much. Just to grate it down slightly. It's just on the brown side, so let's put a touch more ultramarine in that. Once again, test it. Yep, that should be good. Okay, I'm going to wet the background with the sponge. Get a nice even, but not too wet. So I'm just uh, soaking the sponge here. Okay, it's just over here. Let's get all this wet. Obviously, I want this to reflect down in the water slightly as well, so we'll dampen the water down there. with the nickel titanate yellow. I'll just make sure my brush is clean. Don't get polluted. I'll just take some of the excess water off that. Right. 
start. And so I want this to be the strongest light source down there. This will come down into the water. So let's put some down into the water there. Okay. Cat orange next. So let's sort of around there. And just let that bleed into that. So I'll mix up some light red as well, just a touch. In there, have a touch of the orange in it. Just to okay, just put that in. Now into this purple. Just start off in this corner. If it mixes as this, it will turn the red grey. And obviously a bit in from this side as well. A little bit from the undergrowth there. this. Right, let's put some of these colours down in the water now. So I'll come down with a touch of orange just around here. Into the water. Touch of this ready orange just around there as well. We get a nice glow in the water there. And then a touch of the purple. Which I just need to mix a spot more of that. It's amazing how much uh, it can take. Just uh, get some water on that. Let's get some horizontal strokes in this as well. Make it look a bit more like water. out here just to climb some of that back just in there just gentle taps just to get the nice glow keep it going get rid of some of this excess over here right okay just put a few streaks of the grey in now. Just in the corners here. Let's grey it down slightly. Just across the across there. Okay. I think 
and we'll leave it at that and let it dry and see what we have at the end of the day. Okay, next job, I'm going to put some background in for these trees. Just a little bit of uh, indistinct hedgerow there and paint in a few trees. I want to soften those into the background before I actually paint the foreground trees as a hard silhouette against the light there. So we'll start, I've mixed a couple of colours. Um, I've got a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine tending towards the brown side and that's ultramarine and burnt sienna tending towards the blue side. So those two colours should basically give me what I want. I just need to soften some of the background. Let's just make a quick test on those. That's fine. That's fine. So I'll just soften some of the background. Not too wet, because I don't want it to run out of control. Right, clean water. Let's just put some water around there. Just down that hedge line there. Let's go with some brown first. I think you could do with that should be a bit stronger. Let's uh, put some more burnt sienna ultramarine together. That's better. Try that. The edge is still protected with the masking fluid at the moment. So. for the tree. All right, there's a couple of trees in the background there. Let's put one there, one there, one there.
and we're waiting for that to dry. I'll have a look down here, see what I can actually do down here. A similar sort of thing. Um, obviously, want some grasses peeping through here, so let's uh, just make up some more docks. So, keeping the brush strokes horizontal because it is water now. Right, just need to dry this off. Right, time to remove some of the masking fluid. Okay. Right, we'll turn orange glow. Down to one side. I've got to put the whole tree in. Where's that to start with? And I do 
these one at a time because I don't want them drying out before I get a chance to finish them off. Sort of coming down the this side of it. Drag that across there a bit. And try and keep this one edge pretty light. But obviously, I want the this side of the tree quite dark. So that's catching the light there. That's a little bit more dark down this edge. Obviously down into the ground there. Oh, that's the first one. Okay, we'll speed the process up now. You saw me do the one tree there. Everything is just a repeat of this now. Um, going in with the cad orange first, just to get the glow from the sunrise actually on the tree. Now putting in the dark side, that's a dark mix of um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. As I say, the rest of it is just a repeat of this, so I'll catch you on the other side. and leave a
few of his stones now.
Okay, just adding the final touches now, getting towards the end of finishing this. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Just a few little branches there, here and there.
I certainly think it's getting towards time to stop. Right, brush is down now. Right, that's enough. I'm fiddling now. I said now. Right, stop at that. Now to remove the masking tape. It's amazing what a difference this makes. Taking the masking tape away from the picture here. I do hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, a thumbs down if you didn't, and please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you again next time.